the legacy series everyone's like when are you going to get to the legacy series man i'm, sh I'm sure the, the the viewers are like because that this is so we're at eight books now is that right uh, yeah it's eight books it was supposed it's a six book eight book series okay <laughs> all right you three lay it on me whose brainchild was this who or multiple people um <laughs> What the heck spawned this? You know, it's like okay, we cannot leave it in in golden in the golden um, bay. What what's what's it called? The um, San Francisco Bay. Start, yeah. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> I was working on Death Game for Sally, and I was also frustrated with the way Atlantis ended, like a lot of viewers were, and so. I said, okay, I'm going to write a big fanfic fix-it epic, right? Um, and roped Melissa and Amy into it. And then we started working on it. And I said, you know what? It wouldn't hurt to pitch this to Sally. I mean, what's the worst thing she'll say, right? She'll say, we can't do that. We have to stop at the end of the show. And Sally loved the idea. And she said, well, I don't know. I don't know if MGM will go for it, but let's try. There you go. No, I mean that's that's absolutely right. You can only the, the worst that's going to happen is they're going to say no. So I mean, you got it. You got to give it a shot. And what do you think is? Yeah. Uh, uh, Amy, uh, what is one of the th one of the more radical elements that you wanted to explore, or one of the more exciting things that came out of it that you weren't expecting? Looking back on this. Oc trilogy or whatever you want to call it, whatever Oc that word is. Oh, <laughs> octology. <laughs> well, I think we knew going into it that we were going to have to explore the point of view of the Ray, but I don't think we knew going into it quite how much we were going to have to explore the point of view of the Ray. You know, one of the things that we knew very early was that we wanted to arrive at some kind of solution to the Wraith problem that didn't involve either a killing all the wraith or b forcibly turning the wraith into humans we felt like the series had kind of looked pretty extensively down both of those paths um none of us were really happy about going down either of those paths it might be personally satisfying for some of the characters but it wasn't really very satisfying for us as how to resolve this problem with a complete different intelligent species. And so we were looking for a door number three and door number three involved digging pretty deeply into who are the wraith and how are they kind of conceptualizing the problem of we have to eat other intelligent species. How do we maybe feel about this? How do we feel about being at war with other intelligent species perpetually because we're a perpetual threat to them in order to kind of even envision an ending that was not somebody's species gets wiped out for good. Mm. One of the conversations that Andy Frizzell and I have always had is she's always like, you know, I'm not evil. I'm just hungry. And <laughs> I'm like, well, I mean, you're kind of going in there. It's not like you go in after, you know, Marshall Sumner, or Colonel Sumner and going, you know what? Uh, I'm really sorry about this, but I kind of like need your life essence. So it's nothing personal. I'm, I'm really sorry. <laughs> no, she is playing with her food before she eats it. She is enjoying and doing what she's doing. And maybe this has just evolved out of her nature. Um, but I never like got the impression that, you know, they really are introspective on what they do to us. Is that something that Legacy attempts to do? Yeah. Melissa, go ahead. I know you like this one. <laughs> Sorry. I think that that playing with your food is a cultural response to dealing, to eating other intelligent people. It's That's one way of coping as a society, as a culture, that it's perfectly okay to do this because that proves they're not really people, therefore it's okay to do it. Okay, now that is brilliant. And so is that, is are those kind of elements addressed in Legacy? Yes, Wow. Oh yeah, some and this is how some wraith go for that. Some wraith are more ambivalent. Some mm. wraith just don't think about it at all if they can possibly avoid it. Huh. I can't think of any other species that might do things like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. 
<laughs> All right, Joe. Um, what is the inciting incident for Legacy? Why do I need to run out and buy book one? What happens? If you did not like the ending of season five with Atlantis stuck on Earth and the team disbanding, and you say, you know, I want them back in Pegasus, I want the team together, go buy the first book and see how this winds up being solved by a variety of clever stratagems, including Jack being a sneaky, sneaky man. <laughs> a sneaky, sneaky man, you say? <laughs> he is a sneaky, sneaky man. Jack uh -huh. is manipulative and sneaky, and he manages to get Atlantis going back where it's supposed to be. <laughs> if only to get Rodney in another galaxy again. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Amy, your your pitch for Legacy. Yeah, we, you know, we get Atlantis back to Pegasus where they have to face all of the conflicts between the different species of the Pegasus galaxy, the different cultures of the Pegasus galaxy, the Wraith, the Janai, the Satidans who are beginning to start rebuilding Satida wow. that have just been simmering under the surface all this time and come up with some way to play peacemaker while facing a new and even more dangerous threat from the Wraith. Wow. And how do the Vanir work into this? I'm very curious because I've been always a very big Vanir uh, proponent, even down to their name. So tell us um, how you're going to pick up uh, the pieces in these stories with the Asgard's distant cousins. They kind of come in, you know, we, we know that they're there. We know that they have been a problem, shall we say, in the past. We know that they've <laughs> they very nearly electrocuted Daniel Jackson, but they also ha are in a difficult situation, like so many of the peoples of the Pegasus Galaxy, um, and their solution is potentially damaging and dangerous to everyone else. And once again, just as Atlantis thinks it's resolving some of its problems with the Wraith, here there's a new conflict and a new set of issues to uh, broker to try to broker a peace among multiple cultures. What scene uh, in that entire eight book series, at least in terms of what's out right now, is the most special for you? Um, try to make it one that you wrote. Uh, or maybe one that you wrote and um, one that one of your peers wrote in in the Legacy series itself that you think that people would be really, really interested to know a little bit more uh, about and to, to tease them to go out and, and get the book? I think the final confrontation with Queen Death on the Hive ship in the last book is one of my favorites and it is really touch and go it is really exciting um i just love that whole end sequence in inheritors with the space battle with sam and the hammond with the hive ship with the boarding party um it's just exciting and it's tight and it's fun um our only little whiffle was we wrote this section and we were all following different sets of characters and I was doing the boarding party and someone else was doing the space battle at the same time and all, all this part and we got to the end and then we realized that Major Lauren was in three places at the same time. <laughs> And so um, we had to go straighten out poor Lauren so that he was only in one place. But it's a really fun, wow. epic ending. Wow. So you, you, I get a kind of a Lost City vibe out of this here. Um, so the Wraith yeah. call her Queen Death? Uh, yeah. the Queen Death is the big baddie. The, she, the I was going to say, she, she, uh, she sounds like a badass. <laughs> She's a badass. <laughs> All right. Amy? Uh, standout scenes for a standout scene for you. Well, I love the action sequence in earlier um, in the books in which the Wraith make a fairly successful attack on Atlantis. And uh, I don't think it's too spoilery to say that at that point, 
Rodney McKay goes missing and things begin to fall apart a little bit. Um, it's a really exciting action sequence. It's a really exciting series of escalating things going wrong. And it was tremendous fun to work on. I think in a smaller moment, and again, hopefully not too spoilery, toward the end of the series, the Atlantis team has gotten their hands on a weapon that could conceivably destroy all of the Wraith, but at a tremendous price of also killing other people in the Pegasus galaxy who have some of the Wraith genetics for a variety of reasons. The, the Taylors among them. The Taylors like yeah. among them. Yes, it, this would you know kill all the wraith, but also everybody who has any of the wraith genes. So this will kill Taylor if it's deployed. Deployed. Yeah, and there is okay. a extremely tense standoff between Ronan and John Shepard about what they ought to do or not do with this object, and just writing through everyone's extremely strong, extremely difficult feelings in that scene was a really exhilarating and really hard scene to write. And I think it will be a really fascinating scene for readers to read. I don't know how Ronan would respond in that situation because no one hates the Wraith more than him. But next to Shepard, no one loves Taylor more than Ronan does. Yeah, so it's, it's very hard for the characters. And I think it was very interesting to write melissa i think i'm gonna pick two relatively small scenes um one is from uh homecoming the very first book uh and sadly it's not one of mine i only wish it was um a, a washington dc party scene where taylor is working the room trying to get people to agree to going back to let atlantis go back to pegasus and it's you know full of you know, jack o'neill is there john shepherd is there various uh, characters that we've heard mentioned and it's this very small scene of politics as they are in the real world experienced by taylor from pegasus who's frame of reference for this is being a traitor for her people and it's not all that different and it's just it's beautifully done it's absolutely beautifully done wow i am personally very really loved the first meeting with queen death between todd and queen death he's been trying to avoid and evade dealing with her staying out of her reach because she is uniting the wraith under her willy-nilly and when he ha he confronts her on her ship. He's must go formally with all of his uh, officers and uh, scientists, and she just and she invokes an old rite of an old wraith rite of feeding on one of them. Oh shoot! To prick to ensure their loyalty. Wow. Wow, that's uh, that's intense. <laughs> I love I love the Wraith. <laughs> you know. They're very punk you know. rock. <laughs> Thank you for watching this clip from Dial the Gate. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving us a thumbs up with that like button. It will encourage the algorithm to show this to other Stargate fans. Also, please consider sending this to a fellow Stargate friend. I also want to invite you to subscribe to future episodes right here on YouTube. We are a live show, so changes are likely to happen all the time. And if you plan on joining us live, you'll want to be the first to know. Be sure to visit dialthegate.com for the complete guest schedule so you'll know when to join us and ask your very own questions to our guests. See you on the other side.